We're going to start with the stance here. We want our inside foot up. We want to have flexion in our joints, our ankle, knee, and hips. We're going to put our back foot back as if we were racing somebody in a race uh, with our back heel just off the ground. Uh, as you look at the stance here, you see his knee, his knee is just in front of his ankle. Okay, there's some flexion in his hips and, and back knee. You're going to push off your back foot and roll over your front foot on the start. Okay, we don't want to have any false steps. Our chest should be out on our knee when we're in a good stance on our front knee. And again, we just don't want any false steps here. We're going to push off our back foot, roll over our front foot. Next up is the stalk block. And really what we start out with in our stalk block fundamentals is we start out teaching the stalk position. Okay, in the stalk position, we want our feet just wider, just wider than our shoulders. We want to bend our knees and sink our hips, dropping our butt. We want to keep our chest up, eyes forward, hands inside. That is a good stalk position. Okay, and really the first thing I usually do is line up the guys and, and blow the whistle and I make them get into the stalk position. Uh, so again, we want to make sure their feet are wide. All their power, by getting, being in a good stalk position, it allows them to use, uh, play stronger or have more power. We all squat more than we bench, so now we're going to have a chance to use our legs in the block. We also want the weight on the inside part of the balls of our feet when we're in this stalk position, you know, because we're going to have to be able to move laterally from side to side. The next thing in the stalk block that we want to talk about is the breakdown. We want to break down two to three yards from the defender. Uh, so we usually start on a line here, and we're going to come out to the next line with the defender two to three yards on the other side of the line. You know, and again, it's the purpose of this drill is to make sure they know uh, what is exactly two to three yards from the defender, and it also allows us to check that stalk position again for them. So again, they want to come off the ball hard, get their breakdown, feet outside of shoulder width, and uh, be in a good stalk position. Then the next phase of the stalk progression, so you start out with the stalk position, you start out with the breakdown, then the next thing is really the close, okay? Because when we stalk block, we don't want to get out there and get into a staring contest. We want to be aggressive but under control when we stalk block. Uh, so the next thing you got to teach them how to close, and it's short, quick steps uh, when they're closing in on the defender because, again, he could move from side to side at any time. So we've got to be under control, but we want to get to a position where we can engage the defender. You can watch Ty right here come off the ball, breaks down. He's going to close. And, again, notice that as he's closing, he's gaining ground on the defender because, again, he wants to get engaged with the defender. The next thing, so again, stalk position, the breakdown, the close, and then the, the fourth phase is the punch. And when we talk about punching, we're in a good stalk position. We want our nose on the bottom of the numbers. And when we punch, we want our thumbs to go into the sternum and the V of the hand to go underneath the pec muscle of the defender. So there's Ty right there with, again, the V of his hand is underneath the pec. The thumb is through the sternum. He's punching with force, but yet he's not stepping forward when he punches. So again, he's being aggressive, but he's under control. With the punch, you want to make sure your hands are inside the defender. Low man wins, and man with his hand in, hands inside wins. Okay. Then the last phase is you kind of you put it all together. Okay. Good stance, good start. He's going to come out and break down and uh, close, punch, and then drive the defender. There's a good breakdown, close, punch, and drive. And right there is a good fundamental stalk block. You know, and again, this is how we teach it. Now the defender moves a little bit one side or the other, and again, he closes and punches. 
one of the drills we like to do, uh, we can do this first, the DBs, as you go through this thing, maybe practice three or four, I think. It, uh, you get to this point where you've gotten your fundamentals down pretty good, and now you just go against the DBs. We have a running back back here. We just toss him the ball, and we tell him he's got to run between the numbers and the sideline. The DB backpedals for three steps and then reacts to the ball. The receiver comes off the ball, breaks down, and engages. Again, you can see Dennis doing a good job right here. The, the wide receiver doing a good job breaking down. Hands are inside, low man, and running his feet and maintaining the block. The next thing we're going to talk about is uh, releases. And really, with releases, we talk about a couple of things. One is releases versus press, or hands and feet. That's how you win. You win on the line of scrimmage, and you win with your hands and your feet. Um, in, in the releases. The other things that we talk about with releases is we want to be physical, we want to be violent, and we want to be vertical. By that we mean we want to attack the defender, we want to be physical with him but keeping his hands off of us, and we want to get vertical, meaning that we want to stay on our line. We don't want to let him redirect us way off the line that we want to stay on. Okay, in the first release uh, we're going to look at right here is a speed release. And right now, this is used against a defender who's shaded opposite in the direction we want to go. Okay, so if we wanted to go inside, he'd be on our outside shoulder. If we wanted to go outside, he'd be on our inside shoulder. And we're just going to go right now, step vertical. And again, the key to winning against press is getting your hips above his hips as fast as possible and we want to give as little ground as possible. So right here, he's, just, he's not giving any type of move. He's going to go right now through the inside shoulder of the defensive back uh, and get himself vertical and get back on top of the defender. His hands ready. His hands are active and ready. You don't want to wait for the DB to jam you. You want to club him as the DB as you're going. Okay, as the hand is coming up, you want to club it right off of him. Again, the DB shaded on our outside. We want to go inside, and there's our hands ready. When we club, you really want to aim for the elbow of the defensive back. As he shoots his hands, you want to be on the elbow, uh, again, to make sure you knock his hands down. But you've got to keep his hands off you and you got to keep him from keeping his hips above you. Right here is an example of his hips are above the wide receivers. He's going to continue to grind you. Uh, every time you knock his hand down, he's going to put it back on you. Here, when you get your hips even and past his, once you knock his hand off you, you're, you're in great shape. Okay, And that's a speed release. The next release we're working on is going to be a freeze and a jab. You know, again, we talked about hands and feet. So here, now we're going to really use our feet. So we're going to get our feet going, and we're going to use a stick or a jab step opposite in the direction we want to go. When our feet are going, you should see that the receiver should be moving forward, not in place, moving forward, because again, we want to be vertical. And here, here's some example. We're doing this on air here because, again, I want them to be able to check, and we start right on the white line so they can, I can see that they're actually moving forward with this freeze uh, move when they're getting their feet going, the foot fire of their feet. And again, you can see them moving forward. And it, when the jab is, we want to make sure we don't jab in place or stick in place. We want to stick and get the DB moving. Again, the purpose of the freeze and the stick is to get the DB to lose his patience and, and get moving uh, opposite in the direction that we want to go. That's why we jab opposite in the direction that we want to go. And we want to stay as vertical as possible. We want to give as little ground as possible when we release the DB. And you can see the guys working on it right here. And again, we're working on air because I don't want them to get stoned the first time they go against the DB with using these moves. Um, they got to build confidence and they got to learn how to use their feet. I jump into the drill here 
you know, just so they can get a feel for that defender standing in front of them and how that jab step can move them opposite in the direction that we want to go. Always having your hands ready, even though there's no defender on them right now, I want their hands up and ready and ready to club because, again, we've got to keep the guy's hands off of us. You can partner them up and do this drill against each other too with a, a partner in front of them, you know, who's again giving them token resistance here with it. Now, the, the other release move that we use may, might be downfield. Now, say we have an inside breaking route with a heavy inside technique on the line of scrimmage, so we cannot get inside of them on the line of scrimmage. We talk about clubbing the defender by. So we, again, we have a, uh, an uh, under route or a shallow cross or a slant or even a curl uh, where we have to get inside of the defender, but we can on the line of scrimmage. He just has us out leveraged so bad that we can't do it. So we talk about using a club by. So here, again, hands ready to go at the front, and now we're going to get him running. Okay, we want to get the defense. The, the, defensive back running and then we want to club him by we want to put our hand on his butt and push him by us again right there and we want to be a little bit more physical than that with the club by and again right now we're working against you know other wide receivers so again the resistance is token you know so we can just get ourselves in the right body position and and be fundamentally sound with it and then when we go against the DBs, we'll use it for real. Right there was a curl cut. Now, that, that's a bad job, and I put this on there so you guys can see that. That's a bad job by the uh, defensive back here, giving him a good look. So there's no way you can club that guy by. He's too far behind. The guy playing defense has to get him run on his hip so he can use the club by. And there's a good example right there. There's another curl cut where he's 45 degrees back to the quarterback. There's a shallow cross or an under route. Again, we're just coming flat right here. One more. And again, we start out with this stuff against ourselves so we can work on the fundamentals without it being competitive yet. You got to get good at the basic. And here, Next, the next drill you're going to see with the releases, and again, I wouldn't start out with this. This would be day four, practice number four, uh, where you're releasing versus the DBs, okay? And I like the idea of we start on the end line, okay, on the sideline, so that I can see on film real easily whether or not they're moving forward and attacking with their release move. And we also like to start them uh, – if there's five yards between the white lines there. We start them right in the middle, two and a half yards from each side. So again, we can check and see how far they got pushed off their line. Okay, we should never lose more than two and a half yards against the defensive back uh, when we're releasing them. That right there was a, a freeze and a jab. Again, hands and feet, physical, violent, and vertical. Not a bad job with his hands there. There was a that's a speed release right there by the guy uh, going and again he he gave, as you notice that on that if you rewind that to that you can see where you know he just went right now and his hands were ready to go to club him off and he's going vertical 
And w when do we want to use that move? Again, a speed release is when he's shaded opposite the direction we want to go. The other thing with that drill there is you want to make sure you tell the receivers which side the ball's on, you know, on their right or on their left, so they know which foot to put up. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about are breaks. And really, when we're talking about breaks, we're talking about the transition from a forward run uh, in a straight line to some type of movement. And really, there's a couple of different types of breaks that we work on. 45 degree breaks that you're coming back to the quarterback. That might be on a curl or a hook or even an out. Uh, there's 90 degree breaks where you're coming flat inside or flat outside, OK? Um, and again, they would be used on a dig or some type of square out. Uh, and then the, the third type of break that we work on is a vertical break. And really, they're, they're the breaks that you use on a post or a corner route. Um, the 45 and 90 degree breaks, really, the fundamentals are the same. Uh, body position wise, we want to sink our hips. We want to get our shoulders over our toes, or another way to say that might be your chest over your thighs on those 45 or 90 degree breaks. We want to start the break point. Uh, we want to start our transition from that forward run to that 45 or 90 degree break as close to the break point as we can, and we want to make the transition as quickly as possible. And the first drill we're looking at here is a Jerry Rice drill, and really, uh, we call it a Jerry Rice drill. It's, it's a curl cut. And what we're trying to do is we're bursting out to the first cone, and they're going to circle that first cone. And what we're looking for there is we want our, their body position to be as trying to maintain the same body position. We don't want them to raise up and down. So we still want a nice forward body lean right here as they're circling the cone. And then as he approaches the next cone, we want to see him sink his hips and drive out, plant on his outside foot and drive out of his break. This is a curl cut that we're working on this 45 degree break right here. Again, the ball is inside. We're using softballs right now. When you can do this drill without a ball or with a ball, you know, usually the first time I do it is with a ball. The second time uh, might be without a ball. It depends on what I want him to focus on. If I was teaching a high school guy or a uh, Somebody bef even before high school, I would probably start to drill without a ball so they're only thinking about their break fundamentals that we want to have. He bursts off the line, circles the cone, body position the same, shoulders over toes, or chest over knees, plant on your outside foot and drive. There's going to be a slight chattering of the feet right at the break point. Again, we want the chatter to be as quickly and as soft as possible. Um, you know, again, we want to attack our break points, so they should be attacking the cones. Good body position right there. Bang, sinking of the hips at the top and out of the break. Again, good body position right there. Just got to keep his eye on the ball. Notice that after they catch the softball here, they're finishing up the field, getting vertical with the ball. You know, again, good good habits of th thinking catch and puncture. Circles the cone up to the break point and come back for the ball. There's probably about uh, seven or eight yards from the sideline to the first cone and another five or six yards to the next cone. Again, notice I'm not throwing the ball here um, because, again, I want to be looking at their breaks. The guy who just went right there, and I'm going to rewind that, watch his body position. See how he stands up and sits back on his heels when he's circling the first cone? That's not what we want. Again, maintain a good forward body lean right there, sinking of the hips, driving back out of the break. And you could go right or left um, with the guys. Okay, here is again a 45 degree break drill, and we're, we've got a square set up, and they're going to come up to that first cone. It's five yards away from them. They're going to sink their hips, plant, drive out of the break, drive back to the ball, 
There'll be a ball thrown as they come out of their break. They're going to catch and then get vertical and puncture with the football. Because again, once we catch the ball, we want to get vertical. So again, you can incorporate this 45 degree break into your ball drill circuit too. Good sinking of the hips. And we want them to challenge the cones so they shouldn't start their break till they get to the cone. Good sinking of the hips there. Boom, driving their feet into the ground to put on the, basically they're putting on the brakes, slamming their feet into the ground and driving, pushing off their left foot, their outside foot here because they're curling back inside. If they were running an out cut right here, they would plan on their inside foot. When they do it correctly, it should be a four-step process. One, two, three, four, to get out of this break on a 45-degree break. Still the same drill. Good job with his body position right there. Sinking of his hips, shoulders over his toes. Good. Exactly what we want right there. Now notice how far back he was on his heels. Okay, and that's why he comes out of there sliding. Same thing with him. Again, you can see his shoulders going back as he's going into the curl cut. You want to keep your shoulders over your toes, chest over knees, whichever way you're thinking of it. You know, the, the guys whose shoulders get back when they're coming out of the break or rise, their chest rises up and not staying over their toes, they're the guys that slip and fall coming out of the break. Or it takes them a long time to make the transition from that forward run. Now I just put the cone just a little bit further away from them. Uh, so again, they're simulating these curls. We run these curls at 12 yards. So I'm really trying to simulate letting them gather more speed and force them to get up to the cones. And again, you could see with him right there, his shoulders are back, his chest is up, not over his toes. Better. Sink your hips, shoulders over toes, or chest over knees, however you want to say it. It's the same thing. Plan on your outside foot and drive back. If the quarterback was on the other side of them, was on their right right now, it would be like they were coming out of an out cut or a comeback. Same thing. Okay. Now this is a 90 degree break that we're working on right here. And uh, again, same fundamentals, shoulders over toes, sinking of the hips, plant. If we're making a 90 degree break to our right, we're going to plant on our left foot. If we're making a 90 degree break to our left, we're going to plant on our right foot. The cones are approximately five yards apart here. And we're just trying to get three breaks out of this thing. Once you go, everybody goes to the right, you start the line on the left-hand side and everybody gets their break to the left. We're not going full speed right here. We're talking about a half to three-quarter speed because, again, I want their body position to be right. I want them to challenge the cone, meaning get to your break point. You can see he's starting his break way sooner than I want him to. Notice right there how his chest was rising up in between the two things. I don't want that. I want to stay in a good forward lean the whole time. Again, right there is my young freshman who constantly, you know, wants to sit back on his heels. His, his chest comes up at his break points.
you know, what I'm telling him right there is I want quick feet. Get up to your break point, quick feet, and get at, sink your hips and get out of your break. Quick feet at the break point. Two rounded right there. Pretty good, real good, nice and tight to the cones. Quick feet, good again there. There's my guy who wants to raise straight up. Okay. Quick feet, quick feet, quick feet. The next, the, the last break that we work on is that vertical break. You know, and again, it's either whether we're running, it's a 45 degree angle away from the quarterback, whether we're running a post or a corner route. And really what we're looking for here is we want a little bit of an emphasis step at the top, right at our break point, you know, a little head and shoulders opposite in the direction we're going to go, and then we come running out of our break. The difference between this and the 90-degree uh, breaks and the 45-degree breaks is we, we want to sink our hips at our break point, okay, but we don't need to chop our feet at all. And there's your little emphasis step at the top. And again, just the sinking of the hips, no chopping of the feet. The chest, our plane level of our chest doesn't need to change at all. We're still, we don't want to slow down our forward movement at all on these when we're making these vertical breaks. Emphasis step. And again, we've incorporated a ball into this drill, but you don't have to right away. Um, but we're always looking for ways to let our guys catch balls because that's really what they do. And it, the ball is great as long as they don't lose track of the fundamentals of the drill, which right here we're really emphasizing the, the emphasis step, the head and shoulders fake at the top of our stem, and running out of the break. We don't want any, I don't want any slowing down from that forward run that we're in to come out of this break. We should be sinking the hips and driving off of our, because we're running a corner route right now, it's off of our inside foot. If we were running a post route, it would be off of our outside foot. The purpose of the emphasis step is just to try to get the DB leaning opposite in the direction that we want to go. The, the next thing we want to talk about is catching the football. And really with catching the football, um, we talk about uh, three fundamental things. Uh, number one is you got to keep your eye on the ball, and we want to focus on the tip of the football as it's coming to us. The second thing we talk about is proper hand placement. And really, if the ball is above my waist, I want to make a diamond with my hands. Thumbs are together, and pointer fingers are together, and which forms a diamond. And I want to look the tip of the ball into the diamond, okay? Um, and then the last thing we talk about, again, goes back to the eyes because we want to keep our eye on the ball until we lock the ball away into the tuck position uh, with that. Um, the other things we talk about with catching the ball is having soft hands and trying to catch the ball out from our, away from our body uh, with it. There's a lot of different ball drills you can do. The, the number one thing you got to try to do with, with your receivers is, you know, make sure they get a chance to practice all the different types of catches that they might have to make in a game and all the different types of hand positions that they might be in. Uh, you know, and again, when you start out with a young player, it's not a bad idea to let him know that, hey, the ball's coming above your waist here. So he knows, hey, it's diamond, uh, thumbs together, four fingers together. Um, or the ball is coming below my waist, which is when I want to put my pinkies together and thumbs up. I'm still looking at the tip of the ball into my hands, um, even when the ball is below my waist. So we start out here. This drill is like a clock drill, and he's standing about five yards away from the thrower. And they started the first one, should have been right above his head at 12 o'clock. And then it goes to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 
Uh, the next one should be at 3 o'clock here. And there it is. Okay, and then the next one would be at 4, 5, 6, so it's right below him. Um, you know, and again, you want to make sure that he's looking at the, focusing on the tip of the ball, his hand placement is correct, and he's lo looking it into so he locks it away. Over exaggerate the eyes on the ball, the focus and concentration on the ball. And we go the whole way around the clock. It's a great warm up drill for the wide receivers whenever they get out there because they can do it to themselves really play catch with each other if they're only five yards apart and move it around the clock. Uh, if you drop the ball at any phase as you're going through the clock with it, you want to you start back at the very beginning again, 12 o'clock, go all the way back around to 12 o'clock. The next drill we're going to look at here is, you know, what we call a down the line drill. And again, what we're trying to train here is we're still working on eye placement, but now we're trying to focus on him coming out of a 90 degree break. Uh, so he'll have his back turned until uh, the quarterback says ball. At that point in time, he'll snap around inside, the ball will be in the air. Uh, and the degree of difficulty just totally depends up to you how, whether or not you want to initiate the throwing process right before you say ball or whether you want to wait for him to come out of the break. Again, usually we're trying to build confidence and focus on the fundamentals of catching the ball, being the proper hand placement. But he's going to start on the other side of the line here. So when he comes out of this 90 degree break, we always talk about when we come out of 90 degree breaks of having a friendly angle, meaning being slightly downhill. Uh, so we're attacking the football. So as, as he, the receiver comes out of this break, he should be slightly downhill. And then again, we want to puncture with the football once we catch it. So there he is downhill, looking it in, locking the ball away. Ball, downhill, locking the ball away. By using the white line, you can see whether or not he was coming out of it on a friendly angle. Ball behind him. Again, you want to try to throw it. You don't want to make every ball perfect. Behind him, high, low all the different catches he might have to make in the game there. In on his body, always two hands on the football. The quarterback can be, now the quarterback moved on the other side of him, so now it's as if he's coming out of that 90 degree break towards the sideline. The first one was like a dig cut where he's moving into the quarterback. Now he's coming out of that square out 90 degrees away from the quarterback towards the sideline. Again, catch, look the ball all the way in until you lock it away. Proper hand placement. Ball above your waist, diamond. Ball below your waist, pinkies together, thumbs up. Still, though, when the ball is below your waist, keep your eye on the tip of the ball the whole way. The next uh, ball drill we're going to show you is a 45-degree break. So again, the, the wide receiver is standing approximately 10 yards away from you. And on your command, he's going to come down and break on a 45-degree angle. Ball downhill, catch. Again, look the ball into the tuck position, turn up field and puncture. Downhill, 45 degree break. Left and right side, we want to do this too. Again, trying to throw the ball to all the different places. That's why you don't need the quarterback to be you know, that far away from the guy. Depending on your quarterback's ability level, heck, he could only be five yards away. 